Let's see how to create outline shaders. And by the way, in the previous video, we saw how to create that smooth transition texture based links in the description. But now let's look at the outline. We're going to see how to create an outline that we can define in pixels, just like the outline layer effects you can find in Krita or other programs, except that this one is generated in real time in your game. If you have a keen eye, you will see that this outline is not perfectly round. Well, for one, because the sprite has some drop shadow on it, but it's also because of the way we're going to create that outline. At the game's resolution and in motion, it works perfectly. As usual, source code in the description. Now let's get started. So if you have the demo, you can use the test sprite I've provided for you. If you don't just pick any sprite, it will work. You just need something that's transparent because the outline will appear around the sprite and within the bounding box of the sprite node. If your sprite fills the entire box, it will not be visible because shaders only operate inside that box. Note that you can make the outline inside the texture and inside the sprite instead if you want. But we're going to see how to make it outside the sprite. Let's create a new material, again, shader material, and a new shader resource inside of it. I will save the resource at the root of the project. Let's call it outline and get started with it. So first we define our shader type. It's going to be canvas item as usual and the shader random mode. We also want it to be unshaded this one. Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe you want some lighting on top of it. Unshaded is the most common mode you'll use for canvas item shaders if you don't want them to be affected by light. Now we're going to start with our exported parameters. First we want to define the width of our outline or the size if you want and we're going to define a range with a minimum of zero and let's set the maximum at uh, I don't know 30 pixels something like that and we're going to use a color for the outline as well so for that you need to use the vector for type four values for RGB and alpha let's call it the outline color make sure that we give Godot the hint color so that once we save the shader and go back to the material and the shader parameters we get that color picker which is quite convenient. And I'll set the width to four pixels to start with so that we can see our outline appear as we build it. We're going to add our fragment function because we're going to work on pixels again here. Okay, so let me explain what we're going to do here and I'm going to use Krita to demonstrate the ID. So I have the base sprite and I have a copy of it that's pure black. Imagine that this is our outline color, okay? We're going to take our texture and sample it multiple times but offset it slightly in different directions this way. So let me copy the sprite four times and I'm going to offset it by four pixels on the right, four pixels on the left, four pixels down, and four pixels up. And there you get an outline. Now with these four pixels, especially on a round shape like that, the outline approximation is pretty good, but you do get some flattening on the diagonals. And that's why we're also going to use four other copies moving to the diagonals. We're going to add all these alphas together and divide it by the number of copies. We'll do that with a bit of a trick, but this way you can get the outline effect around any sprite regardless of the shape. So let's do this. We're going to calculate an alpha value. We're going to set it to minus the number of times we're going to offset and resample the texture. So in our case, we're going to do that four times to start with. Let's do four times multiplied by our sprites alpha. And to get it, we've got to sample our texture here. Let's call this the sprite color. We're going to store the texture lookup in a variable. And we want to use the built-in texture all caps constant name. This corresponds to the texture of that sprite and the texture function is going to extract the colors from it. 
This is a sampler 2D and we need to pass in our UVs as well to get the colors that we want to really just get this texture a copy but inside a variable. Now our alpha is going to be minus four times the sprite colors alpha value. Now we're going to look up this same texture four times but with a slight UV offset every time. So we're going to do something like alpha plus equals we're going to add the result of that lookup we're going to look at the texture plus and we're going to use a vector 2 to offset it every time on the uvs for example if we want to start going to the right we can do plus 0 0.1 and 0 on the y-axis we extract the alpha only because remember we are working on a floating point value called alpha here and we do that four times and finally we're going to do it going to the left going to the bottom so 0 0.1 and going to the top minus 0 0.1 now we're going to assign our outline color and the alpha only to the color result so we can visualize our outline outline color dot rgb and the alpha and you will get this weird result we do get our red outline here with a bit of flattening on the side that's fine for now we're going to fix it and we do get an outline plus something inside of the sprite that looks a little weird so the first thing we're going to do here we're going to replace that 0.1 hard-coded value with our width in pixel note that using 0.1 makes for a big outline because we are currently in the texture space when we do that we are in uv space so 0.1 means 10 percent of that texture size on the x-axis or on the y-axis now we're going to calculate a width or a size based on our width in pixel at the top of our shader Let's create a new floating point value. We call it size. It's going to be equal to the width times one divided by, and we're going to use the texture size function to calculate the size of the texture. This one takes a texture and an LOD, a certain level of detail or mip map of the texture. In 2D, we generally work with the full resolution texture. So that's the LOD zero in this case. And we want to take the first component of that value. This is going to give us an integer value. Remember that textures have fixed size in pixels. So we get an integer. We're going to wrap all that in parentheses and I'm going to convert this to a floating point value. So we don't get that type error. So our float size is equals to one divided by the size of the texture. So we get the size of one pixel that way, multiplied by the width we want in pixel. Now we're going to copy that size and I'm going to replace our 0.1s here. Control R, I'm going to replace them with size and make sure to only select the lines where I want to replace values. Click selection only and replace all. There you go. So now we can control the size of the outline in pixels using our width parameter. If I type 8, I get an 8 pixels outline. Note that with our four texture offsets, if the outline is small, it works really well. The problems start to arise as we increase the size of the outline. The more we increase it, the more we get that flattening on the sides and the more you can see the overlap between our texture lookups. But up to six pixels, it seems to be working pretty well. So if you only need six pixels, you can stop right here. Now, if you want to use eight texture lookups, you're going to start with an alpha of minus eight times the sprite's alpha, and then the resulting eight texture lookups look something like that. Now I've got a little exercise for you. When you start to see this many lines of code repeated, there's something you can do about it with loops. So I invite you to simplify this code with a double for loop, but we're going to move on to calculating the final color because right now we have an outline and we have some empty gap in between. So we want to put our sprite color 
back in the center. So one thing we can do is mix between the outline color and the sprites color and their respective alphas to make sure that we get the right colors on the right pixels. So first we can make sure that we compound both alphas together with the max function. Max will return the highest value between the two. So our alpha and also our sprite colors alpha. So as we get values of 1.0 in the center, we're going to use that to get our sprite color back. Now, as you can see, we do get some negative alpha values in the center. This is why we get that weird color. So one way we can also compound the two alphas together is to first get only the absolute value of this alpha plus the sprite colors alpha. And we're going to clamp the result between zero and one. So we use the clamp function. We're going to pass that as the first parameter. We clamp between zero and one. And there you go, we get a fairly opaque result. Now we're going to calculate our final color. So let's call that the final color. And we're going to use the mix function to mix between the outline color and the sprites color. So sprite color first, outline color second if you want. And for the transition parameter between the two, and we could simply use our alpha as a transition value. Now we want to replace the final color in the color assignment at the end of the shader and make sure that we only grab the RGB values. You do get with that negative alpha, that alpha error that we get, we do have the outline, but we do have some artifacts on the texture. So we want to make sure to clamp the alpha between zero and one when we do that to not have that negative alpha value. And with that, you have your outline shader. You can change the color, you can change the outline width. This is not a 100% optimized outline. You still get some artifacts here and there. You can get updates and improved code by going to the open source repository and grabbing the outline shader there. The point of this tutorial is to give you a quick look at texture size, at doing some logic with pixels like offsetting the texture multiple times using multiple texture lookups, techniques that you will reuse in different shaders. I invite you to go watch the transition shader video if you haven't already or our series on shaders with Bastian Olige about 2D and 3D water. You can also support GQuest by getting our good course or supporting us on Patreon. But that's it. Thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.